funnest things that we're going to have to do with trial and error is figure out what we're running through the insecticide boxes. Well, we have some red clover seed that we've produced, and we have a little bit of alfalfa seed that we purchased, and we have radishes, and we have turnips, and we've got some sun hemp, and some crimson clover, and uh, I think we even have a bag of flax. No, we have rapeseed. <laughs> so we've got a real hodgepodge, basically any seed that is small to run through the insecticide boxes. Boy, it's gonna be fun getting that mixed up uniformly. And so our pattern will be uh, four rows of cowpeas and two rows of sedan. And we have a bunch of different combinations. We have the high rate sorghum plate, we have the low rate sorghum, and we have the high rate cotton and the low rate cotton. And so I'm gonna look in the book here and try and figure out how to stretch those cowpeas out so that we can run four rows of cowpeas and two rows of sedan but uh, keeping the sedan relatively thick and the cow peas and the cover crops thinner. So, time to go to the book and start trying to figure out some population numbers. So I think that for our starting point, uh, we are going to use the white lower rate 30 cell cotton and the red high rate uh, forage sorghum or sedan plates. And we will set the uh, set the uh, sprockets at the uh, where's it at about the 19 and 24 combination, 52,000. And so if we set that combination, then theoretically we'll have a four inch plant spacing on the cow peas. Uh, we're going to be putting out like 14 and a half pounds per acre of cow peas, and that should make a bag do about a little over four acres and uh, that same population and the red high sorghum rate will give you a sedan plant every two inches six pounds to the acre and a bag of sedan will run uh, 10 acres but that assumes that you are running in those you know row units and so we're only running two row units of the six and we're only running that's where things get a little bit funny we're only running four rows of the cow peas on a six row planter so hmm. then we've got to have a percentage so on the cow peas it will be two-thirds of that rate and on the sedan it will be one-third of that rate so we're putting out Oh, that should make that bag of sedan go a lot further and the cow piece will go further too. Well, that's a problem for the field in calibration. Uh, <coughs> a lot of these things are guesses. Looking at the dry insecticide rate chart for the Kinsey planter, uh, looks like the variation on 30 inch rows there can be anywhere from like just short of three pounds to the acre, all the way up to 30 pounds to the acre. And remember, I widened uh, the orifices out to 3 sixteenths so that they would flow good. Don't want plugging orifices. And so our rate will be higher than that. Our low rate will probably be on the four, five, or six. But once again, uh, since we're only using four boxes, uh, that will change to we're using two-thirds of that rate and so I bet it will I'm cautiously optimistic things will work out There's very little moisture down there But there's some And thankfully sedan and cow peas do not require a whole lot So here is the row and we are sticking them down there. We 
you're sticking them down there. That's a wheat berry. There it is. So, two inches. We are sticking them in very nice. Kind of hard out here in the wheat field to see the marks. We are going to go no till on this field because you can see the weed profile here. It's so dang dry, there's not a whole lot here. There's a little cover crop. Anyway. It's a good thing I drilled the orifices or widened the orifices out to 3 16 because the cowpeas, not the cowpeas, the sun hemp would not go through a smaller orifice. Everything else would. And so, I don't know, if we have problems with them plugging, then we're going to have to uh, delete the sun hemp from the mix. And it will keep planting. So it is hard to know what to do. Uh, this field here, you can see we don't have near enough moisture to bring a stand of cover crops. And I have a fair amount of uh, foxtail and uh, uh, wild buckwheat. And you know, I really dislike those two. Uh, foxtail, not so much, but the wild buckwheat there's hauling off the straw for me. So I made a decision. Uh, there is chances of rain for the next five days. Maybe it'll come, maybe it won't. But I have made the decision to disc this hill field. Uh, it's like 12 acres to disc it in an attempt to uh, reset the weed clock. And uh, yeah, I'm burning some moisture. But on a positive note, uh, the straw here will be flat, uh, the wheat clock will be reset, and either the rain will come or it won't. Uh, so that's the nice thing about planting cow peas in Sedan. You know, if anything can survive in dry conditions, you know, those two are about the toughest crops that you have. So we're going to continue, and we're doing a light, quick, fast pass with the sunflower disc before we plant the cover crops here. Okay, and now I am bl back planting the cover crop and I would like to talk while I'm working here, but uh, it's all I can do to see the mark. So, can anybody see the planter mark there? So the reality is it takes all of my concentration to uh, and my skill as a planter of knowing the field and knowing where the planter should be to plant this cover crop, but we are slowly getting it in. Uh, my thoughts here are to armor the ground, uh, kill those few weeds that I was talking about, uh, but prevent, you know, wind or water erosion, leave this surface incredibly rough. And so the Kenzie planter is working wonderfully in doing that and providing a seed bed. I know that it's hard to see, but it is there and it is cutting through the residue and getting the seed down. So I uh, will keep running. Okay, guys, it's two days later. I'm going to close this video out. We're about two-thirds done with planting cover crop, but I want to talk just real briefly. So the other day we started out down at seven and a half, and when we were at seven and a half, that was giving us uh, three pounds per acre. Of course, when you concentrate three pounds per acre in this pattern you're putting on, you know, probably the equivalent of five or six. But we had plenty of cover crop seed, and I want to stand, and more seed means more. So I did wind up taking it all the way up to 30. Uh, what we learned there is that pushes it up to like the equivalent of, you know, 18, 20 pounds to the acre. 
And so even with the widened out orifices, uh, you still have perfect control of the seed rate and you can just trickle it on uh, or you can put it on quite a bit heavier. And uh, it, it uh, went on perfect. And then sure as heck, we got done planting and we didn't get as much as some of the neighbors got, but we did get uh, 70 hundreds of rain in two rainfall events. And I did go up and dig down uh, the seed was in moisture, uh, that I planted, obviously that was enough rain to re-wet the soil profile. Uh, don't know if that was enough, depending on, you know, what we have following here. They're talking, you know, mid nineties for the next two or three days, but then it's going to cool off. So I don't know if it was enough for the cover crop seed, uh, but many of those seeds are, you know, quote, quote, relatively tough seeds like that sun hemp. And so we'll give you update videos as the year goes along on what the cover crop did.